Hey guys, it's uh, Jack from Bayside. Just calling over here to show you about what I play for my equipment. That's Ryan, he's the guy who fixes all my shit. The, uh, it's a Mesa 212 rectifier, uh, 412 rectifier cabinet that's been custom Tolexed and custom grilled. Uh, thanks to the good folks at Mesa Boogie who we endorse very strongly. Uh, for amps, I have a Mesa Boogie Mark IV, one of the original Mark IVs. It's uh, probably about 20 years old and I love it. And But I use it as a backup amp now. I haven't been using it as my primary amp for the last year because I got this guy, which is one of the um, first versions of the Mesa Stiletto Deuce that I like very much. Two channel amp, but it's switchable between 100 watts and 50 watts for both of the channels and it's got a solo burst. So it gives me a lot more versatility. And it also runs on EL34s instead of 6L6s. So the tone is a little bit more, I can get tones that would be more comparable to something like a JCM800 or more like a rock tone, whereas this is great for metal. Um, and that's got a, and the stiletto also has a better clean channel. I hope that's not too nerdy, but. <clears throat> Inside here, I just run a noise suppressor that just cancels out a lot of the room noise and if there's bad power in the room sometimes you pick up a lot of radio that helps with that it also helps when our stage volume has to be higher because of some of the smaller rooms where they have lesser PA when the stage volume goes up and you're standing really close to your amp it just reduces a lot of the feedback but I can set it to the point where I can still use feedback as a I can use the feedback in the set but it doesn't overpower anything I can control it a little bit better for pedals what I've been using recently <clears throat> I have a tuner which I think is pretty standard, obviously. I've got a Morley uh, Bad Horsey 2 switchless wah, and I really like the Morley wahs because they don't have to have the uh, click down to activate, so it's kind of brainless. You're, as soon as you touch it, it's activated, and as soon as you back off of it, it cuts off, so it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to use than some of the other wahs that I've used, like the, uh, the Vox wahs or the, or the Dunlop Crybabies. Um, a Dunlop Phase 90, which I like as a phaser. I think it is a noisy pedal though, and I wouldn't really be 100%. I like, I like the phase effect on it for a lot, but the switch is always noisy on it. No matter how new they are, it's always a really noisy pedal. And I'm sorry if people from Dunlop are watching this, but your pedal's noisy, and you should really fix that switch. Okay, and coming back to the noise suppressor, that helps a little bit, but it's still, if you're clicking, if you're switching phase on and off in a, in a quiet part in the song and you've got your distortion channel running, it's very evident. It's really poppy, so that's not a great thing about it. But it's a good, it's a good phase. Uh, I have a digital delay pedal here, which is the DD3, which is a much older version than a lot of the delay stuff people have been using recently. But I like it. It's simpler. It doesn't have tap tempo. It doesn't have anything like that. Luckily for me in our set, all the delay that I use can be set around the same place, so it's not really noticeable that things are off slightly. Uh, and I use it mostly in songs that have similar tempos, so it hasn't really been an issue. Um, I do also have uh, an equalizer pedal that I use as <clears throat> almost like a third channel sometimes. If I have the two channels, I've got clean and I've got a gain, and I have a solo burst for both, which is mostly just a volume boost. Um, but with the EQ pedal, if I need to do something like a mid boost on a clean channel with the solo channel running, I can create kind of like a dirty clean sound with that. Um, that'll increase in volume and also give it a little more guts in the middle and the mid-range so as opposed to having kind of a small bump in the middle of the EQ where I like to boost mids to get clarity of tone I can really create a high swooping mid-range and then boost the gain on the EQ pedal that gives it kind of a lot more breakup and makes it more like a dirty clean channel and <clears throat> all right so this is uh, my three guitars this is one that uh, I used to use a lot and um, this is a, an Epiphone Elitist uh, Les Paul custom that I like a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot lighter than a Gibson Les Paul, but it's still pretty solid. I've swapped out the electronics in it, it's, so it's got new pots. The toners are Grovers, and they're the original ones, and they hold tune pretty well. <clears throat> it's got an in and out burger sticker on the back. Uh, I have a George Lynch Screamin' Demon pickup in the bridge, and I have a Gibson 490R pickup in the neck. <clears throat> So the pickups have been replaced. And it's a solid guitar and it definitely stays in tune. And it doesn't have the same weight as, again, a Gibson Les Paul Custom, but it's still got pretty good weight and it plays really well. And then my other guitar is actually not an Elitist, but it is a Les Paul Custom Silver Burst Epiphone. Um, and this one has a, again, the same pickup configuration as before and replaced all the pots and knobs. And it has the Grover, it has the Grover pickups, uh, the Grover tuners as well. So. Again, not quite as heavy as uh, as a Gibson, but still pretty good. And uh, again, a great this is a great road guitar to have. Then 
My number one guitar is one that I've had for about 10 years, and this is actually a Gibson Les Paul Classic that weighs about as much as both of those guitars together. So I like that. It's got great weight to it. It's in pretty good shape. I love Blood for Blood, by the way. They're a great band. Uh, this has different pickups than the other. It has different pots. This has all the original Gibson pots and stuff, and they are the only part of this guitar that's not original right now beyond the pickups are I put a brass plate on the input because the plastic one that came originally was breaking and I actually replaced the heritage tuners they come on the classics with uh, standard Grovers with the because they're just whole tune better and the pickups for this I have a this doesn't have the George Lynch this actually has the JB pickup and a jazz pickup so it's a little bit more high output than the George Lynch it's a little bit brighter but uh, the guitar is heavier so it kind of makes meets somewhere in the middle and this is sort of my baby guitar I've had this for I don't know, I've had it for almost 10 years and it's this is one of the first this is one of the first few tours where I'm taking it back out because every time I go home and I play it it gets me bummed out that I don't get to play it as much as I as much as I want to. Not to have nothing bad to say about the Epiphones, but this is the guitar that I really love. And uh, Yeah, that's all my stuff. So fuck you. Alright, this this is the last part of my equipment that I'm actually really stoked on because I'm the only guy in our band from Boston and the rest of the guys are all from New York and Kevin who hands me my in-ear monitors every day hates hates Boston intensely so on my in-ear monitors I have little Red Sox logos and he has to look at them and hand them to me every day and that is a silent victory for Jack